Alright, what's going on everybody? Uh, looks like we didn't draw in too big of a crowd um, today, but that's usually normal. Uh, we're kind of in the in-between. There's a lot of work to be done and some people just don't stick around for it. Uh, that's part of it. You know, when we're doing really well, this Ask Me Anything will be full. Uh, and when we're doing really bad, the Ask Me Anything will be really full. Uh, but in between, uh, you're probably expecting to see less people and that's fine. Uh, you know, I don't care if there was one extra person in here. Uh, I'd still do these. Uh, that's because I think some people appreciate it. So I'm going to continue doing them. Uh, and and we got some good stuff to cover today. And then uh, some stuff that may happen. Um, but I, I do want to speak about that now. Uh, so I am pretty front-facing with you guys. Uh, you guys have seen my face. Uh, you know a little bit of information about me. Uh, obviously, it's a good position for me to be in. Uh, I love being genuine and open with everybody, uh, giving you a space to, uh, uh, of trust uh, in this world of crypto. Uh, but, you know, the, the dev wants to remain anonymous, and I'm perfectly fine with that. Uh, but me just being a mod and, and being able to manage the community to the best of my ability, uh, I did want some more control uh, so that I had a final say because at the end of the day, you guys don't know the dev. Uh, and if everything went to hell, uh, which I don't think it will, just saying, uh, if it did, uh, then the person that will be blamed will inevitably be me. Uh, I'll be catching the heat and the death threats. Uh, so I wanted more control. Uh, I reached out to the dev and asked if I could get a multi-sig uh, for the treasury, uh, which he said he was fine with. Uh, so we're working on that. Uh, so I'll be multi-sigged on the treasury, uh, which is nice. Uh, that means that you guys, those of you that trust me, uh, that are in here every day, uh, will get to see that. Uh, and you won't have to worry so much about an anonymous dev because I'll have a say where the treasury gets spent uh, and I'll be able to make uh, help make transactions uh, so I can be more transparent and uh, hopefully give a little bit extra trust to everybody that's invested. Uh, I know that you all trust me a lot and I appreciate it, but you know I have to do stuff for my safety as well. Uh, and one of those is being that I push for that multi-sig. So I did. Uh, and the dev obviously responded well, so uh, nothing to fret there. Uh, so he's he's working on that. I think he was busy most of the day. He showed online, but he actually wasn't online. Uh, I think he was busy with his day job, so we didn't get it done today. Uh, that's the reason the Dow King video didn't come out, is because I want that done before the Dow King video, because he's trying something new with his channel, uh, and I want to be a part of it. Uh, and I had reached out to him long before uh, Miniverse had, had reached out to him about doing those uh, those doxings and stuff like that. I was I was ready to go on there and just, you know, uh, talk about Tomb Forks in general with him, uh, and he knows that, and he's going to speak about that in his video. Uh, you know, I have no problem showing my face in this space. I, you know, I don't worry about my uh, genuineness coming out to anybody. I think everybody knows that my intentions are pure, uh, but so I'm okay with it. Uh, even though you're still going to get deranged people to make you know threats and stuff against your life, I've been in the internet space for quite some time. I'm okay with it. Uh, it doesn't affect me that bad. So that is what I have uh, for the initial news is that, that I will be multi-sigged, hopefully soon with the Treasury. Um, something we just spoke about in chat, um, possibly getting a community vote to remove the AVAX pool, uh, which we clearly see that there's a lot of arbitrage bots now that we've added it uh, and, and we're removing that and keeping us back to uh, make sure you use Joe and the price impact and stuff like that. We'll come back with it. Uh, but I think the pros right now outweigh the cons because we don't have a lot of volume coming into snow um, and this is going to happen uh, like not every investor is going to be <laughs> through the tough times uh, some people that move fast pace in this space there's a lot of younger people uh, or older it doesn't really matter i guess your age uh, you're just looking for fast gains because that's what that's what crypto is advertised at uh, even though i think that uh, the compounding and the amount of rewards you get from staying in one that you know is safe uh, outweighs the amount of rugs in the space uh, but you know that's for others to find out once they've been in it for long enough so our tvl is down uh, we do officially have a layer two launch clearly it destabilized things uh further down than I had initially thought. Uh, I'm not at concerning levels yet, uh, but you know it, it's gonna take time to rebuild the peg. Uh, the amount of people that have broken their LP and started single staking is, uh, is great. Uh, you know, we're sitting at 160K liquidity right now, and uh, you know, price movements are affecting it. 
We just need buyers stepping back in, and that's going to take time, uh, and that's why the compounders do the work for us. Once people see uptrends, once people see us closer to peg, they're going to say, whoa, this is, gonna, this is actually going to work. I'll buy back in because a lot of people uh, you know, that don't have the fortitude to be into something that's down uh, will always buy in green, uh, and that's just part of it. And those are the people that you affect whenever you do marketing. Uh, everybody wants marketing, but they don't understand the same people that will sell snow under peg uh, or won't fight for peg or just APR chasing are the same people you attract with certain types of marketing. So that's why you haven't seen a lot of marketing because we've been uh, extremely blessed uh, with the with the way that we've grown uh, in our uh, in our time in the space uh, with, with just being a stealth launch and just growing the community the community organically. I think we've had three videos about us. Uh, you go to other projects and they've got the same amount of discord users almost. And that's where everybody came from, and nobody was educated, in my opinion. And uh, that's why, you know, I, I think that not only do we organically grow, but we also educate. And the more people I educate, the more people you educate, the more people spread the love to the next. Uh, and that's how we get a strong foundation. Uh, and I think we still have a very strong foundation. Uh, it looks like we found a bottom around uh, 30 cents. Uh, good God, I hope. Uh, for everybody, uh, but you'll see that other tomb forks that are failing that their their peg token falls much much lower. Uh, you know, I think Grave is sitting at 0 0.7 uh, 70 cents, and they're supposed to be pegged to seven dollars. Uh, so they're substantially down, and and we're still holding strong uh, at these levels. Again, we don't have a lot of new buyers, and that's part of it. Uh, hopefully, the new Dow King video will bring more exposure. Uh, me having a multi-sig will bring uh, a little more trust in the space uh, and things like that, uh, that we can we can start discerning ourselves from other tomb forks that come out every day. Uh, sure, we have a high EPR, highest uh, that, that is in the space, unless you're a new fork. Uh, we're mature and we're still pumping out really high EPR. Uh, and I think that's something to, to market uh, because the reason that it's working is because we've organically grown into it. Um, you know, and where others may struggle with high APRs, uh, we, we do it because everybody, or to a decent degree, is educated in the space uh, and knows exactly what to do. Now, clearly, it doesn't always work, and that's why we fell under peg. Uh, but for people that may uh, feel like they got their ass kicked, uh, trust me, I know. I have the same feeling. Of course, this all happened while I was on vacation. Uh, but, but what we need to look at and what's important to look at is that we've now... Uh, we, we inflated snow for 20 days. Over half our emission cycle, we inflated snow. Some of those at extremely high APRs, which prints even more. Um, so what you need to understand is that tomb forks are supposed to bounce back and forth. Uh, now since people got so popular with tomb forks, so many came out, people started APR chasing. That's why they don't work as well uh, as they did, is because people fought for peg to keep the APRs up, and, and sustain, but then once Tomb came out, then more forks, more forks, more forks, and people started saying, hey, you can make a lot more money just trading these. Uh, the reason I think Snowy's different is because our high emissions are able to sustain high APRs. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a difficult line to walk. And uh, if you're in here and you've been suggesting things to, you know, to do, new things to do, uh, thank you, because uh, we're gonna need it. Obviously, we, we have to continue to evolve uh, in this space and, and attract more investors. Uh, and I, I think we have a lot of good for new investors uh, just off our, just, just our base. Our base layer is just really well, it's just really well done. Uh, the 30 day emissions I think was smart. Um, I think that that's the problem with Tomb is that n nobody in crypto thinks in a year. Uh, 30 days is a year. So technically our emission cycle in crypto years is about one year. Uh, and I think that's perfect. And us having a layer two for 60 days, uh, I think is very unique. Um, and I, I'm, I'm happy to see where it plays out. Uh, obviously right now our layer two is taking hits and that's because most people in layer two, uh, well I hope, are, are trying, to, um, trying to support our layer one. And that's, uh, that's exactly what we need right now. Uh, both can thrive, but one, the layer one needs to, to hold peg and that's because older investors that have been holding on to layer one want to see uh, that layer two actually supports it. Otherwise, they will fail on both ends. Uh, so that's why it's important, and that's why I push so hard. 
Uh, but by no means do I think that, that Fox needs to completely fail out. Uh, no means do I think that this is a failed launch. This is, seems pretty normal um, from what I've seen in other Layer 2 launches. Now, I thought we had more strength coming into it, but uh, as we saw, um, the amount of people that kind of jumped ship once, once we went under peg uh, was substantial because they thought that they could cut their losses and make it back in the next gen pool that was going to probably rug them. Uh, and that's fine. Uh, we are going to lose them, but at the same time, we, we gain them back uh, through, you know, through us succeeding in getting peg. And if we get back peg from this, uh, I think it shows a ton of strength uh, in our community and in our project. So, you know, I'm excited to see where it takes us. Uh, but that's kind of my ramble to start off to ask me anything. Uh, let me see what I've written down here. Uh, just today, we've, we've fallen a little bit, uh, but... I think at our high, we were up about 35% on snow. may not feel like it, but that's really good. Uh, we want that organic, stable growth. We have low uh, LP, so any large buyers are going to have people exiting on them. Uh, I've had a couple people reach out, hey, do you, if I spend 10, 15, 20K on snow, would that help? Uh, and I say, whoa, you know, that's, that's too much uh, for me to recommend one because I'm an idiot. And two, because, you know, most people are going to exit off of that big buy. Uh, that's why buybacks I've always kind of been weary of, because I feel like buybacks in the end just waste treasury value. Uh, but the good news is we had a good amount of treasury to retain uh, LP after everybody broke it. And that's great. That's great that we had an LP uh, or a protocol on liquidity, uh, because when things, you know, broke down, we were able to break uh, our LPs comfortably and know that even if everybody did it, we still had 100 to 120K worth sitting there in the back end that would never move. So we were always able to trade it. Um, so I think that's really great to see in action. Uh, and, and I think that it helped us a lot. Uh, so that is about snow and I think it is performing pretty well. Obviously we're at 38 cents now. Uh, I think some of that's arbitrage bots because there's not a lot of buyers stepping in. Uh, and I saw a couple of dumps from them. Um, a lot of people talk about what are we going to do when we're over peg? Uh, we have a lot of single stakers, uh, and that's what we were supposed to do. Uh, and I've thought about it a lot. I've seen a lot of suggestions. Uh, it's, it's a very, very tight rope that we're going to have to walk once we get closer to peg. It's going to be very difficult for me to navigate the community uh, in ways, because if I say, everybody break your, LP, I mean, break your snowshares up into LP, then it's going to be a bunch of people dumping. Uh, so I've thought about it a lot, uh, and I'm still racking some ideas and still taking community suggestions about the best practice when we do it. Uh, the best thing I can say is if you see upswings and we're getting closer to peg and you feel like you're at a comfortable time where you know you're not going to affect the price drastically, then make some LP along the way. 5 to 10% a day, 20% uh, if we're doing really good, whatever it is that you think is comfortable. I think most people, especially in this call, are educated enough to make that decision. Uh, just don't, you know, don't take a 50K bag and split it in half and sell 25K because uh, then you're going to make LP and then have to break it up again. So we don't want that. Uh, we definitely don't want that. So please don't do it. Um, but yeah, uh, so I want to make sure that we, we know that we can do 5 to 10% a day as we move up to PEG because uh, that's also securing the price. At, you know, it's making a more sustainable price and, and taking volatility out. So in case we're at like 60 cents, and more people have LP'd at that time, and we have 250k of liquidity, uh, and someone dumps 10k, it's going to be a lot, uh, a lot harder for them to tank price at that point. Uh, so that's kind of my initial thought. Uh, another thought I had was, uh, if you're in, involved in layer two at all, uh, like I am still, uh, take any of your fox that you can get from the boardroom and start making it LP with that, um, with the snow that you have single staked, uh, because you're getting massive amounts of uh, APR right now it's huge uh, if you haven't seen it it's it's an amazing one uh, and actually I keep I keep a big position in it because I have it in yield wolf and that's making buys to both peg tokens so it's pretty beneficial uh, to the protocol all around uh, it's it's constantly making buys as long as you have it in that yield wolf so I, I recommend doing that um, with it and and also just be patient uh, it may take you know more days uh, more ways for me to to actively involve new investors uh, and that's okay. You know, we want slow and steady. Uh, I know it's hard to be patient when you're down, uh, but, but that's what I ask of you. It's hard for me too, but we don't have uh, another option right now. And, and the best thing we can do is, is keep positive uh, and keep educating new members 
uh, and, and, you know, eventually we'll get back there as long as everybody's ready for, for a long haul of at least a week or something and not looking to exit within, a, you know, a day. Um, so use auto compounders for new LP. It's essential because it's constantly buying back. Of course, we have to, we have to uh, sacrifice the share price right now. I know that's not fun for people that were in it. Trust me, I know. I had a uh, hundred snowshares or more that I bought uh, over the course of like 80, 60, 120. Uh, and when we were fighting for peg, I, I dumped them all for snow, every bit of them. Uh, and I still hold the same snow position. Uh, you know, I refuse to sell in situations like that. Uh, so I, I know most people here did too, and thank you for that. Uh, it's what the protocol needed, and that's exactly what we did. Uh, so if you're still holding uh, snow shares, uh, the discrepancy between snow shareholders and snow is pretty wild. We have 800 snow shareholders and 500 snow holders. Uh, and so if you're listening and you may not understand what that could mean is that there's a lot of people that are just holding cheap snow right now and they're expecting everyone else to do work uh, and get back to peg. And then, uh, you know, they're going to have more expensive. Obviously, snow shares will rocket or go up a substantial bit from where it is currently. Um, and that's okay. Uh, I think that you have to get into these situations and know there's absolutely nothing you can do about it, uh, period. Th there's going to be bad actors. There's going to be people that don't give a shit about what we do here. Uh, and the, the goal is to get more people that care than that don't care. Uh, and 500 to 800 isn't terrible. Uh, it just sucks to hear and it sucks to know. But uh, that, I'm telling you all that transparently because the, it's, it's just what it is. Um, and we're going to have people that want to do that. Uh, but at the end of the day, those are still buyers uh, and holders. So, you know, maybe we can convince them to to work for the project and, and continually compound and get high APRs uh, for their efforts. But that that's kind of my goal. Um, and then uh, for when we're over peg, you are also going to be able to start redeeming your bonds. We have a substantial amount of people with bonds, obviously the biggest holder being one of them. Uh, I have a substantial amount of bonds. Um you know, I'm not going to dump any of my snow once I once I redeem bonds. Uh, but I have to recommend to you all to make sure you do it safely as well. Uh, if you don't know, bonds will have a multiplier. It will pay out more snow uh, if our TWAP is over 1.15. Uh, you'll start getting more snow per bond um, than you would if it was at like 1.01, uh, which is when I'll redeem. I'll redeem when we're at 1.01 just so that I don't get the multiplier because I don't want the, the project to be in debt. Because uh, that's what it is. The project's going in debt to you, uh, and, and we have to pay those debts back at each epoch that we're above peg. Um, so that's just part of it. Uh, so again, if you, if you have bonds and you redeem, uh, just be cautious because uh, we don't want to be in the same position again, and that can happen. Um, new farms. Uh, well, we should talk about new uh, partnerships. Uh, so if anyone's listening, I did not know about the partnership, uh, about the the bear uh the polar bear. I did not know about it, uh, but you know, it, it, it is uh, something that could benefit us in the future. Uh, so I won't turn away from it. And uh, they seem like a great community. They're exactly like we were when we first started. Uh, they did not gain the traction that we did. Uh, and that's why you're seeing some of the price action that you're seeing is that their emissions are just as high, but they're not gaining new members as fast. Um, and, you know, I can assist if their team reaches out uh, in the things that I had done uh, to try and, and bring the project to where it's at now um and i'm more than happy to i've reached out to their mod team and, and their dev is extremely nice and, and i've spoken with him plenty of times uh, i invited him to the ask me anything and he said that he possibly could come up to you know one or the other uh, but he did not want to today uh, so don't know what the uh, aprs of the new pools are but i know that the main one to focus on is the bear snow uh, and the main goal is just to give you utility to to have exposure to other protocols uh, that still have the same benefits of holding snow and possibly gain uh, new members like that. So that's our new um, our new partner. I've linked their Discord. Uh, please go in there, stop by, say hello. Um, you know, their success is our success and, and vice versa as, as far as I see it. Um, and they're dealing with some of the growing pains that we had grown, uh, that we had dealt with at the very beginning. Uh, they're just going through it a little bit faster because, again, I don't think their community had developed as fast as ours because um, I think we are the first. They're a fork, so sometimes that happens. Um, no idea what the APR will be if we do have new farms. Uh, I haven't heard anything from our developer, 
so I'm unable to speak on that. Uh, rebates. Uh, of course, I want rebates for the new Fox, um, and I want Snowshares to be the main rebate. Uh, I think the dev had spoken about doing um, some type of Snow Fox, um, not rebate technically, but some type of conversion uh, to burn Fox at a, or burn snow at a higher rate. Um, so that's pretty interesting. I'd like to see where he develops that at, but mainly the Snowshare one, and that's what's going to cause Snowshare to become deflationary. Uh, is that you're going to put it into those rebates and gain Fox back. Now, we have to be you know, careful with it because we don't want to dilute Fox to a degree uh, that we're in a similar situation that we are currently with Snow. Again, Snow truly actually suffered from its own success of being above Epoch for, or being above TWAP for, uh, for you know, 82 Epochs. So, uh, you know... I look at it as a huge success uh, that we didn't fail farther than we did because we are higher diluted than a lot of other projects are, and we did not go down percentage-wise as much as other projects had once they lost peg. Uh, so, you know, it hurts to, to be this low, but it also uh, gives me some confidence in the future. Uh, granted, we get some more some more buyers, new investors, or old investors that had moved out. Um, so, happy with that. Again, rebates, Snowshare rebates, Snowshare Joe rebates for Fox, uh, hopefully coming. Uh, one thing I wanted to speak about through all the debates that I've been seeing is um, the long-term effects of everything. Uh, I know that there's a lot of quick fixes to garner a lot of attention fast on snow, uh, but it's important to realize that some of those things have real long-term uh, long-term effects on, on Snow's price, uh, and we have to be careful, and I didn't consider it at first. Of course, I wanted new things to garner, a lot of things to get us right back up to peg, uh, but I'm starting to realize that a lot of these things have a lot of uh, negative uh, implications towards Snow price in the long term, and and I've been a little bit worried about it, um, and, and so is the dev, and the, the dev is the one that originally said, you know, that if we do Snow bonds, this is what would happen if we do staking with it, uh, you know, what the effects of bonding is, uh, should I educate members on it, or should I just let the people that know what bonding does stick to it? Um, and, and that's one that I've been back and forth on, uh, is should I push for bonding because, one, they're very high risk, and two, it puts the protocol in debt, uh, which could end up being uh, not as beneficial if everybody redeems them and dumps them because they're frustrated with the, the amount of patience it takes to keep a bond. So, um, yeah, I've thought a lot about it. Um, let me, let me read over it make sure I've, I've spoken about it. Um, bond staking is great, but it isn't a fix-all. Uh, it gives the current 80 holders of the snow bonds uh, a place to park them, but if we advertise it and we have too many people buy bonds not understanding them and trying to stake and then upset that we aren't at peg and they may feel trapped uh, and they may start dumping them as soon as we do reach peg. Uh, and, and trust me, it seems crazy that somebody would buy a bond and not know uh, what to do with it, even though I try my best to educate everybody. But again, if you were in general chat, I just had someone reach out to me and damn near, you know, threaten me my entire community management career uh, because his Snowshare boardroom wasn't printing, uh, even though he, he said he clearly understood what a peg was. And, and he just he did not understand why we were being so malicious about that APR that we listed. So there's tons of people that still are not fully educated, and I'm worried that bonding uh, may, may affect that if I was to advertise it to the masses. Uh, of course, anyone that's interested in it, I would, I would gladly explain it, uh, but it is, it is one of those things that, if not used correctly, uh, it, it could have some negative benefits. And again, bond, bonding is for, uh, it's, a, it's a legacy feature that was in the original tomb. Uh, no one's really innovated on it yet. Um, and I'm interested to see, you know, possibly what, what the dev could, could do in the future. Uh, I'm not saying bond staking won't come out either. I'm just saying that I've thought about it a lot recently and wanted to speak on, on my feelings of it. Um, so also, if you didn't know, the more bonds that we give out, uh, the lower the APR goes for layer one. Uh, so that's another negative benefit is that if I keep pushing that, APRs will continue to go down and layer one to other people outside uh, may lose interest. So there's that as well. Um, you know, and, and I'm, I'm back and forth on it. Uh, does the negatives, you know, outweigh the, you know, the positives? So I don't know yet. Uh, just wanted to speak my mind on it a little bit. 
uh, and how I see it. Let's see if I've got some questions. Have we thought about doing raffles instead of bonds? Uh, yes, I had reached out uh, to Sink about doing raffles. Um, now, he said he was going to put it in place, uh, but I think it fell to the wayside based on, you know, getting Layer 2 out and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, and I think that our other mo or our other dev, Snow, had some in real life issues that was he was unable to, uh, you know, keep going for this last week, so he was unable to help. So, um, you know, some of these play people have, like, full teams of devs, and we only have one. Um, so it, it's important to realize that with the with the effort he's put in and the things that he's producing. So uh, yes, I would love to do raffles. I would personally do them myself if people trusted me enough to to contain it, uh, to make a new wallet uh, and and give that out to people. I would gladly do it, but it would have to be something the community was uh, would entrust in me, uh, and I could do it for sure. Uh, I wouldn't mind doing it at all. Uh, anything that would burn it, and then I could send it to you know our treasury address, all the snow or the snowshares, whatever we do, I, c I could do that. Uh, I'd be more than happy to. Uh, so we can discuss that further if people are still okay with it. Uh, let's see. Any cross-chain thoughts with Joe on FTM? I think Printer Finance is successfully bridged between BSC, AVAX, and FTM. Uh, I saw what Printer Finance had done, uh, and, and I'd heard a little bit about it. That's pretty cool. Uh, you know, I'd have to speak to the dev more about what he uh, sees as a future uh, for, you know, Snowy and Fox. And if he wants to go cross-chain, um, to me, it gets a little complicated. Uh, and at the end of the day, I think that this project does best with just being minimalist. Uh, we have high APRs, uh, dedicated investors, and we just want to print and take small profits uh, and then, you know, look for a layer three or look for the next farming opportunity. And honestly, what I would like to see, uh, me personally, is that we do layer one, we do layer two, we find ways to burn these tokens, to give them value all the way to the end, and then we go into a very uh, long-term uh, farming solution uh, that people can just park and leave. Uh, I don't know that it'd be a tomb fork, but it's something of that degree uh, where we can offer, you know, some type of, you know, with all the protocol and liquidity we have and stuff like that, I would love to see some kind of dynamic like that. Um, so maybe that's a possibility. I don't know. Um, but that's kind of my thoughts on it. But cross-chain, uh, no idea. But to me personally, it doesn't attract me. Uh, I think cross-chain causes complications, uh, and it's a huge move for one dev. Uh, and I think a lot can go wrong before it goes good. Uh, but, you know, it, I'm not throwing it off the table. I just don't know what his intentions are. Um, let's see. Uh, I did want to speak. If anybody wants to come up, please raise your hand. Uh, not a lot of people are interested in speaking today, which is fine. Uh, if you guys just want to listen, I'll, I'll go through my points, uh, and then I'll open the floor up for everybody. But if you do have a question, feel free to come up and, and talk to me. I know there's a lot of uh, frustration, uh, anything like that. Or if you just want to debate me, you know, whatever you want to do, come on up and, and speak. Uh, that's fine. Uh, and then I wanted to talk a little bit about why everybody's here as far as education, uh, how ta uh, the total value locked and APR slash emissions work. Uh, a lot of people don't understand that the APR changes. Uh, what are the weights? Why do they count? Um, so I'd like to explain it a little bit. Um, so the entire reward pool that we have that we give out, which is the share tokens, has a set emission schedule like fox or um, snowy owls is four percent a day uh, so four percent of that of the total reward pool will be given out a day uh, now there is weights to each pool that we have for snowy owl uh, depending on um, how much tvl is locked and stuff like that so like the snow joe pool is the heaviest weight at one if i'm not mistaken uh, which means it will garner the most weight out of all of that so the emission schedule will, or the emissions will heavily weight towards that you'll get more rewards in that pool uh, so that's what the weight refers to now no matter what every single day the same amount emits based on how much tvl there is um, will debate or will determine how how often it, or how far it spreads so 100k tvl the APR is going to be massive because not that many people are dividing up the rewards or the emissions. Uh, but if you add a million TVL, then obviously APRs will come down. Uh, and some people get confused about that whenever they see the Genesis pool or new pools get added and they've got 3,000% uh, APR. And they're like, how is this sustainable? Well, that's how it's sustainable. It's not like that forever. It's just as new people come in, uh, that's the kind of thing that you see. 
um, and it and it drops to to a more base level once more TVL comes in. Um, thoughts on an automated setup where people don't need to make LPs and people just deposit the snow snowshare and the AMM just creates LPs or single base stakes based on peg. Uh, that sounds great. Um, I think mainly what you're describing is just kind of that zap feature that I already had had you know pushed for. Uh, but we didn't get it in layer two, sadly. But you know, it's o it's okay. Um, and, you know, I'll I'll keep pushing for it, and hopefully, if the dev gets some time, um, then then I would love to see the team grow. Just the dev to be able to take some of the workload off of him, uh, and be able to to provide more new small nuanced things like a zap feature. Uh, and then you're saying it's based off peg, so you're talking about a dynamic thing where people just put things in, and then they also uh, they would just get they would get the farm. Uh, where it would best benefit um, the protocol. I'm assuming that's what you're saying. Uh, that possibly could work. Uh, I just don't know what back-end work would need to be done. Uh, but not a bad idea um, as far as the suggestion goes. Um, can you please recap the best plan for Snowshare? Yes. Uh, <laughs> the best plan, if you are fighting for the protocol, is to sacrifice them for snow. Uh, as much as you can stomach. Again, I would sold a hundred worth ten grand. Uh, that was then worth six hundred dollars um, when I sold it for snow. So, you know, it's it's really based on your risk tolerance and wanting to get the project back up and running. Uh, as much as you can afford to put back into snow is what I recommend to do with it. Again, you can make LP. Uh, you can do whatever you feel is comfortable, but but at the end of the day, that's kind of what it is, is that those shared tokens will gain value um, once we're at PEG again, period. They won't stay there forever if we remain if we regain PEG. Um, so that's, uh, that's part of it, and it sucks, uh, but that's why it's important to take your return of interest off the table uh, so that you no longer feel um, that that pit in your stomach whenever we, we are to lose uh, so much traction uh, in the market. So hope that makes sense. Photo, come on up, bud. My fellow snowy owl that has now gone into, he's a fox. He's now a fox. <laughs> fox Maxi. Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you, buddy. What's up? All right. Hello, uh, owly foxes. Um, I'll be back in snow. I just had to I know move, you move some snow. Move some stuff around. I understand. Uh, what I was going to ask was uh, about the dev. Um, like you said, he's he's on his own. Um, what like, uh, like how does he pop into the chats or does he um, like how often do you speak with him and and all kind of stuff and um like with i don't like I, i've seen other projects where the dev gets just tired and then and then it just goes to hell so uh what are your thoughts sure um and so my communication with him is usually once a day I'll, I'll usually speak with him for a short stint about my ideas and the community suggestions that you all have given me uh, i'll get some stuff back either good idea bad idea uh and then uh you know i'll speak about kind of the future plans uh, my level of communication hasn't changed with him. Um, obviously, there's been some more trust built between us uh, because of how much I'm currently doing for the the project. But um, you know, I don't I don't think he's tired of it. I think he just has a, a very demanding job, and I don't know what that is. Uh, but he's unable to uh, give his full attention yet to the project, um, and and that's okay. I don't think he's that means that he's given up on it. Uh, but I understand your fear. Uh, but yeah, I, I've seen it too. I've seen devs get tired of projects and stuff like that. Um, but I don't think he's there yet. Uh, you know, he has ambitions, uh, and and I don't know what he does outside of this. So, uh, you know, my communications I wish uh, were more frequent. Um, but usually on the weekends, uh, I have I have longer conversations with him uh, about how he feels about certain suggestions and stuff like that. But during the week, it's pretty minimal. Um, but I'm able to get some suggestions in and then some things you see come to fruition and then other things that he, he's just unable to do at this time. Um, so, 
you know, hopefully that answers your question a little bit better. But I don't think he's given up on it, and I haven't got that inclination. No, no I wasn't. I wasn't saying he's given up on it. I just don't want him to get tired. You know what I mean? Like some people, some some devs, they just they they just get over over exhausted, and then they need to take a break for a while. So yeah. that's all. Yeah, um, I mean, he and he. I mean, I'm sure he is tired. I'm tired, <laughs> so I know he's got to be tired because uh, he's pushing this stuff out by himself. Uh, so, and, um, so where, uh, which part of the world is he located in? I, I, you know, I think he's from the U.S. Oh, okay, okay. But and... again, again, I, I have to, I have to say that you know, I, re I respect the the privacy that he wants, and so I haven't, I haven't dug into it. The, again, that's why I push so hard for the multi sig, is so that I don't have to. Uh, you guys can feel more secure knowing that I'm from the U.S. Uh, and you guys know the general location, even of where I'm from, and you see my face. Uh, so it won't be a docs dev, uh, but I guess I can call myself a community manager now. I think. Is, is, is there a multi sig? Did I miss something? Or? Yeah, yeah. So I am pushing for a multi sig on the treasury with me. And did we get it? Or yeah, he's he's down for it. Uh, we haven't got it yet, but but he he said that he would be down for it. Oh, awesome! Um, and one more thing, I, I'm really confused by yield wolf. I I I don't it. I don't see the the APR gains. Like I know there's there might be some IL, but. Uh, Unless I'm missing something, like the so APR on Yield Wolf, relieve some of that. Um, so on Yield Wolf, are you on what what farm are you on? I'm doing the Fox share and um, Joe. So I currently have uh, Joe Fox, and that's at twenty one percent. Yeah, and then if you look at what you're, let me connect to it. That should be working. Or not the, Joe the Fox, Fox. The Fox. The Fox share of Joe is about the same. It's like twenty two or something. Sorry, I'm or in 20. the I'm in the Snow Fox. Sorry. Um, okay. And if you look at what you deposited, there's a history, uh, and I deposited six hundred eight LP tokens, and then I look and I've made six hundred, and now I'm at six eighty eight. Uh, I've made thirteen percent, so I've gained thirteen percent LP tokens. Now, what those LP tokens contain is based on the impermanent loss or whatever the you know whatever the position holds. And you can see exactly what you have under it. So if you, I always take a screenshot when I first deposit something uh, to ensure that I'm, you know, I'm actually gaining. Uh, and yeah, my, mine sits around because uh, Fox is moving up and down so often. Sometimes you'll see some wild price action, but I look at the tokens accrued, kind of, and not the uh, the value. Uh, but you should see that there's a positive gain of a certain percentage based on your staked position. Do you see it? The green. Yeah saw that but i didn't i didn't realize that token thing that you're talking about okay i'll take a look at that no i see the the percentage but it's not matching up with i mean does that percentage take into account the il too or does it just it only it's only calculating how many lp tokens you've gained it is not uh, taking oh. into account your impermanent loss uh it only it's just bare minimum you put in say you put in a thousand and you get a 20 percent a thousand lp tokens and you um and you've went a whole day, and it was at twenty percent, and you got twenty percent the entire day. You would now have twelve hundred LP tokens. But God. as far as what's okay. in the actual tokens, or the each LP token is based on the impermanent loss uh, of that day. If both of them are wildly different, if they're moving up and down, or whatever it is. Uh, but eventually, you have to gain. I mean, you're getting twenty percent. You'll you'll gain eventually. Oh, okay. Okay. No. Okay. I didn't. That's the part I was confused. Sure. Because every look at this doesn't look like it's increasing maybe it is but but yeah i should i need to check the deposits again then and then check out the token increases but i do see that percentage it says i'm up like nine percent or something like that but yep. but yeah okay perfect i'll take uh, that. thank and, you so and, much yeah that. and also i i did the same thing and that's why i started digging into it because it feels like it moves nowhere uh, but it's usually because you're getting higher aprs on early projects and so the impermanent loss or, or the, the price differentiation goes up and down so often, it's hard to calculate how much you're really making until something sustains. Uh, but eventually, you're, I mean, at 20%, you're, in five days, you're going to get 100% extra on top of your position. Oh, you know? perfect. So, so like I said on the chat, just six days, people. Six days of stability. All right? <laughs> and, he, and he's coming back to snow, he said. Just six days of stability. Let's make it happen. I hope so, okay, man. I can't take this anymore. I know. It's difficult. All right, guys. Take it easy. All right, man. We'll see you.
And let's see, what else do I have to cover? Not, not much else. I'd love to take some questions if anybody has one. No, no questions too stupid. Uh, if you have something that you want to know, uh, please come up and ask. Um, so I, I did make a final note. I'll just read it out. Um, people exiting TVO is reducing. Um, it's temporary. Uh, we are not fully functional, uh, even though we have you know 90% of everything running up exactly as it's supposed to. Uh, except for the BR, uh, you know, and that scares people for some reason, is that we don't have one BR printing, uh, and that, that, that accounts for people, um, you know, thinking that we're never going to reach peg again or be doomsdayers or whatever else it is, uh, but it's not permanent. It doesn't mean the TVL will always be this low or that we're failing to any degree. Uh, if you understand the way the market moves and the, especially the way that crypto investors in this space move, uh, it's much easier to say, hey, look, I know exactly why people exit this position. It may not be smart. You may not agree with it, but that's why it happened. Uh, I think it's much easier to be comfy in your chair watching uh, your position gain through auto compounding or whatever else it is uh, in hopes that, you know, that we regain peg uh, because now you're going to be setting in a much higher position. Um, so hopefully that makes a little sense. Um, you know, you can't force someone to stay. I see a lot of gimmicks about stopping people from selling or do this or, or, or you know, no matter what you do, uh, at the end of the day, the investor has the decision whether he wants to stay or exit. Uh, and it's my goal to make sure that they feel secure in staying. Uh, and hopefully I do a good job at that. Um, you know, but it doesn't always work. I can't reach 2,000 people. It's impossible. People in these Discord servers, they're in thousands of Discord servers looking for new places to go, the next big token uh, to moon, you know, and that's just part of, uh, of being in crypto, sadly. Um, you know, I've started learning and I've started being more reserved in my investing, but I was just like that, you know. I, I was just like it. I was looking for the next big play, uh, and, and I would, you know, I would do anything. I would get rug pulled. You know, if I put $100 in and it went 1000 next, great. Uh, but hopefully soon investors start realizing that there is some security in the space because there is 90% of these projects that are looking for malicious intent. Uh, and to find one that does not have malicious intent that still offers high APR and a, and a good community to come hang around with. I hear all the time that our community is great to be in, uh, and that's what made them stick around, uh, which is why I say it's imperative that we stay positive and, and invite new members in and educate uh, because you know people just need one reason um, to stay. You know, and they don't need many reasons to leave either, sadly. But we just need to retain more people. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'll do anything to, to try and find that edge to get, you know, that one extra person in here. Uh, the amount of DMs I get, even from that guy that was holding me hostage on his YouTube channel, you know, I'm still cordial with him. You know, maybe, I, maybe he came in hot because he felt like he was getting scammed. Once it was explained, uh, you know, he would have been an investor. Uh, so I take every conversation like that, uh, and I urge anyone else to take that conversation as well. Um, but that's it. That's really, uh, you know, that's that's the main majority of what I wanted to speak on for this Ask Me Anything. Uh, a little bit shorter, but I'd love to take some questions. So if you do, uh, you know, I'm going to read the chats for a little bit and answer anybody's questions. Uh, and I'll also uh, take anybody's questions they have. Uh, how do we become a moderator, and have we thought about doing email marketing, more channels for communication? Uh, I have not. I have not noticed. Uh, I haven't looked into anything about email marketing because I don't know how well that works for TFI investors. It could, but I, I don't know anything about it, so it's a little out of my expertise. Um, so don't know about that. Uh, how do we become a moderator? Um, I, I actually don't know. I, I, hope they, I hope they get some more moderators. Uh, I would love for more of you all to, to be able to help me in chat um, because obviously when I sleep uh, and things go to shit, uh, then I get woken up much earlier. So anytime that I can have more help will be appreciated. Um, so even if you're not a moderator and you feel like kicking ass, uh, stay in the chats, uh, get in the trenches with me and, and bunker down because uh, it's tough sometimes. Uh, and then let's see if I've got anything else. Uh, does anybody else have any questions in the chat? I don't want to end it too early. Oh, we do have somebody. All right, come on up, Con. Hey, what's up, buddy? You're on mute. Hey, can you hey. hear me? Yeah, there you are. What's up? Hey, what's up, man? Thanks, uh, thanks for all your effort and let me bust your balls. I just want to introduce myself up here, but uh, <laughs> can you? Uh, I really do appreciate all the different ideas that are going in, like even the conversations that are happening or 
stimulating the community to continue going. Uh, so I appreciate that. My question is just, I kind of want to hear your thoughts on your ledger that you just got. Good point. Uh, you know, I'm feeling really secure. Uh, you know, I've been using the same hot wallet uh, for over six months and I am terrified. Uh, I'm terrified because I know how dangerous this space is becoming. Uh, and I honestly urge anyone else to do the same. Uh, I've used the same hot swap wallet uh, and have never been hacked yet, and I'm knocking on wood. Uh, but I am loving, loving, loving uh, the ledger. It makes me feel really cool when I can go on this little USB stick and have to like sign transactions. Uh, so highly recommend just on the aesthetic. Uh, but I think it is really secure. Uh, I hope you know I won't be I won't be going on like I'll be sending everything to it. Um, but I don't know uh, if I get hacked. What if I got hacked on the ledger first? Would that be some crazy shit? Uh, but yeah, yeah, all in all, it's, yeah, it's nice. The other one, but I, it didn't really interact with DeFi too good because of the EIP like 712 compatibility. But uh, supposedly the ledger you got uh, works really well with MetaMask and actually getting into smart contracts. So, you know, I'll, I'll say it again. I saw somebody in chat say it. Uh, and I think uh, someone else, uh, Hazy, had also had a similar experience that we just downloaded this uh, Rabby which is a DeFi wallet that is looking to, I think, compete with MetaMask. But if you have not used it, I highly recommend it. It is nice. Uh, it auto-connects to... It, it's, it's, what, uh, yeah, it is. It is. It is theirs. Uh, and, and I'm telling you, it, it, it instant connects just like MetaMask. Uh, you're able to save some of your favorite chains. Uh, you don't have to add any new chains. It has like a thousand listed there. And, uh, and the transactions are really smooth. Uh, you have a lot more usability with it, and it, the user interface is by far, by far, tenfold over MetaMask. Um, so give it a try. Uh, you can use your same, you can use Ledger or anything with it. Because actually MetaMask wasn't connecting to my Ledger because uh, I'm on Linux, and it was having trouble with it for some reason. Uh, but as soon as I did it on uh, Rabi, uh, it was super fast. So I'm, I'm connected with my Ledger on that and my other wallet. And uh, actually, I'll probably delete MetaMask because... It's really nice. So, again, Rabby, if you're looking for another wallet, if you're tired of MetaMask's bullshit, um, stand up and uh, do that. <laughs> Did you have any other questions for you, man? Uh, no, I, I'd just like to also say, like, I know we've been beaten down, and uh, uh, i just like to reiterate, like, th these opportunities, too, like once this does kind of revive, I mean, we, we can see a lot of gains. I just want to kind of reiterate that message to a lot of people, even though they're seeing a lot of red right now. I mean, if you stick with it and it does revive, I mean, potential is huge. Yep. And even the, even the peg token, people don't understand we're now at a position in our peg token that we have the same TVL and LP that we had on our like second day of launch. Um, you know, the token was much higher then, uh, but we're, we're, in similar, we're in similar areas where you can buy the token much cheaper uh, with a higher potential upside. Uh, I'm not saying go all in on snow, but I'm just saying if you are holding snow, realize that uh, dollar cost averaging really helps. Keeping powder to the side is what they call it, but keeping some money to the side to be able to reinvest uh, to, to lower your, your average entry uh, really helps as well. Um, you know, I don't have any kind of dollar cost averaging on snow. I just went balls to the wall to try and, and uh, you know, I feel like if, if I don't do it, how can I expect you all to do it? So, you know, I'm, I'm really done with my entries just because I'm all in regardless. Uh, I even took some of my profits that I've even taken out and put them back into snow. Uh, you know, so I, you know, I do what I say uh, and that I won't tell you all to do anything that I'm not already doing. Uh, and I think that's part of being a good uh, you know, community manager. So trust that I am also substantially down, uh, you know, and it's hard for me not to get bogged down, but I can't represent myself that way. Uh, I can't, you know, I don't have the opportunities to be frustrated, uh, which is fine. I'm just, I'm speaking on it that, you know, I, I do of course get frustrated, but you'll never see it. Uh, or I'll try never to represent myself like that because, uh, that's not what you all need. Um, so yeah, it sucks, yeah, but it it's sucks, great. Yeah. Per, it's great opportunity uh, if you believe in us. I also, uh, I think a good conversation that we had maybe in DMs or on general chat was uh, explaining the actual treasury amount that's still in the LP and the, the draining supply of actual snow. Like, I, I think we have at least 10% in bonds. 
we were talking about we have 57 percent of treasury uh, lp still in there so uh the fundamentals are really starting to build yeah and and you know those are things that are, you may not see if you're looking at face value of like oh man this is way lower than it's supposed to be but if you look at, at what we've accomplished uh we're, we're geared up for for a potential to to repeg that all hope is not lost by any means uh, you know, a 10K buy right now would take us up 10, 15 cents. I don't know what the actual do dollar cost would be to get us back to peg, and I don't want anybody uh, with a big bag to, to try and invest that because, of course, uh, I think that you'll become fast exit liquidity for people that are frustrated. Uh, so I don't want that. Um, and But like he was saying, we do have 10% of total snow right now off the market. Uh, we have another 50% that our treasury owns. Uh, you know, we performed some buybacks. Uh, they weren't as successful as we wanted them to be because once this thing started running, we had so much inflation to combat. We just did not have the buy pressure and we did not have the community engagement uh, that we needed. Uh, that doesn't mean it's forever, though. And I think that uh, I think we're going to get back kicking. You know, we're starting back at a fresh start. We're going to gain new investors and some people that were already invested that may not be here anymore. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Uh, because I'm going to keep working and I'll keep trying. Um, so I'll always be here. Uh, and whether you left and want to come back, it doesn't matter. Uh, if you sold, I'm not mad at you. Um, if you're looking for another entry, uh, the buy button is here. And, you know, it, I think you can make a lot of money here. Uh, but there's obviously risk involved. And I try and make that clear. Uh, you know, I felt really bad for that guy because he felt like the guy that I was DMing because he felt like I was uh, me. I don't think he, he personally was you know, misleading him, but the, the website was, uh, I don't want anybody to ever feel like I'm like pressuring people to buy or that it's always a good opportunity. Of course, there's always risk with these tomb forks. Uh, but you know, I, I try and make the best opportunities I can for investors uh, and also try and, and relay the risk uh, of it to every investor to make sure that you all know, um, that, yeah, you know, the, the grass is greener if we get over peg. Uh, and I think that we will, uh, but, you know, there's also money to be lost, and many of people have lost money here, uh, but hopefully most people that lost money had also taken most of their return of interest on the 20 days that our printer kept going. Uh, I know that I personally did. Uh, I, took, I took some profits out uh, throughout those 20 days, and, and um, you know, I did lose a substantial amount more money, uh, but I was able to, to stomach it because I had been taking profits this entire time, uh, and I hope most of you all did too. Because uh, I never told you, uh, you know, I would never represent myself to say, nope, we're mooning. If you're not in now, you're never, you know, you're losing out. Uh, so hopefully that comes through as well. But yes, good point. Anything else? No, man. Well, uh, no, just thanks again. I appreciate all you do. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming up. All right, Barn, come on up. I had not seen you in the chat, so uh, excited to meet you. What's yeah. going on, man? Come on. Hey, uh, your uh, your profile picture is giving me PTSD because I have uh, oh. a lot of police and thieves. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, I, <laughs> I feel your pain. I I don't know why I've kept it. Just maybe as a memor memorability. Yeah, of, man, that's pretty much what you're full. <laughs> that's what it is, uh, man. Yeah, I was just gonna comment on that. I was I was gonna mention it, but then you brought it up, and so I was like, all right, I gotta mention it on the um, the buybacks. The uh, I feel like I know I know the protocols do that because they want to help, but every I kind of find the same thing on the PTSD. I have PTSD at buybacks from from Time Memo. Yeah. Any any time a protocol says they're going to do buybacks, P, that just opens the door for swing traders to just come in and sure. just just sell off. So, sure. I, mean, I don't um, know. I know a protocol wants to help, but I, I feel like every time they they do that it does more harm than good so the so main difference yeah. in kind of how a dow worked and how a tomb fork works is that there was no more inflation coming to the coin um so the goal was that we use some of the lp that we have gotten from our treasury the protocol and liquidity break it up uh, and then use that joe to buy snow and bond it to take it off the market so it works a little bit different and it's a little more beneficial uh, maybe not in the short term price, but but we at least take some off the market to be able to increase that price volatility just a little bit more. Uh, so they may not be effective in, in necessarily okay. bringing price action up that instant, 
Uh, but in overall longevity, uh, it does benefit a little bit. Uh, now, I didn't, like I said, I didn't want to blow the entire stack on it. Uh, of course, we mm. could have kept doing buybacks, and more people that were worried that we would never hit peg again would have just kept exiting on our head. Uh, but mm -hmm. but really, what that is is that we're just trying to take more snow off the market, uh, and okay. that's what we did. So a little bit different, um, you know, than than the Dow promises that that you see. Nobody can ever find a viable way unless you have, as I always preach, investor retention and, and knowledge and education. Uh, and, and also a good community for people to feel like they want to fight for that project uh, and not just, uh, hey, we're going to do buybacks, uh, you know, and that'll help sustain the price because it'll never work. Right. Yeah. Well, good good news is I've, I'm notorious for holding <laughs> too long. So, and I, I'm, I'm in on this project, so I'll be I'll be holding and uh, <laughs> I, I'm terrible at, at getting out at, at a good time. So, me and you uh, both, buddy. <laughs> me, me with my Dows. I assume you're the same way. I, I, grew, I you know, I grew a substantial bag uh, in Dows yeah. and never sold and lost and somehow <laughs> lost money. I think I turned three grand into ten grand in ten days, and then I lost it all within yeah. another ten days. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I'm with you, man. I, you know, I'm I'm loyal. Uh, I feel like uh, in that regard is that you know if I see value in a community or a or a token that I'm invested in, uh, I want to believe in the best case scenario, uh, and I think in the future that's what you'll see in DeFi is that people are fighting for those. And maybe in the early days of DeFi it was like that, uh, but you know now there's so many people that are looking for, you know, fast, um, you know, fast price action and getting out yeah. and getting to the next one. It's, again, why I speak that developers are unable to innovate in this space. It's why it's easier to fork and rug. Uh, and, yep. that's, and that sucks, and hopefully we get better with it. And that's why I believe in DeFi, and that's what I'm going to keep fighting for. Uh, yeah, so. the, the, the Dow King mentioned something similar to that. You know, it's where the, the, the rugs are there because of APY chasers. So if, Correct. It's, our, it's our own fault if we I keep agree. chasing APYs. So, I mean, I'm happy with if I see a 2% for, fork up, uh, up. Uh, Sorry, I can't speak. Uh, Tomb Fork, I mean, two percent's freaking awesome. So I mean, yep. Uh, you know, if if I can stay in that two percent and not have too much loss, I mean, it's yeah, great. So you know, getting in snow right now is perfect. Yeah, and uh, and and it's it's one of those things. Somebody just asked in chat, so I guess I can speak about it. I speak to uh, Dow King almost daily at this point. Uh, uh -huh. You know, especially. Uh, before, as soon as we started marketing with him or as soon as he came up, you know, I had already been speaking with him in private as often as I could uh, just because I liked his videos. I liked how genuine he was, uh, and I think we had similar ideals about most things. Uh, so even past, like, me being in this community, uh, you know, I just – I would I liked speaking with him. Uh, so I've always uh, liked Dow King for yeah. what he represents in the space and the new things that he's doing is great uh, and that's why I'm so excited you know I had reached out to him prior to that I wanted to do uh, a face reveal and speak to you all uh, and that's why I went ahead and did the video but you know if I can get more eyes on us by by presenting ourselves uh, as somewhere to be trusted and also offer high APRs I mean come on who, who's not invested in that you know right. you can you can dump us and pump us all you want and eventually you'll lose money um, some don't, but most do because most people are following a whale's tracks and just, you know, eating shit the entire time. If you are, uh, you know, someone that pumps and dumps, you will eventually get dumped on by bots, yeah. uh, or, or by whales. Uh, you're being manipulated. Uh, and the best thing you can do is find something that you enjoy to invest in somewhere you enjoy being, uh, and, and be there, you know, believe in that work towards, uh, being in a community and integrating yourself and being a positive force. Uh, and you're going to feel much more rewarded uh, for, for gaining in that investment because you worked for it, uh, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, not yeah. everybody's like that, but that's how I see it. Yeah, I, I would love to be more involved. Unfortunately, I have a full-time day job. I understand. So, uh, <laughs> I understand. No, I'm, I'm not yeah. speaking to, to anyone specific yeah. either. You know, right. if you no, can't no. be here, you can't be here. But if you enjoy seeing what we do in the community, even that, yeah. to me, is, is nice to hear. Yeah, I love you know? this. I love the space. Um, yeah, one last thing, that, that Fox Snow is is awesome i feel like it's printing way more apr than it says i haven't done the math yet but like every time oh, I it's look at it, it's like, uh yeah it's printing <laughs> substantial uh the yeah. only problem is is we can't sell the snow for uh for profits but what i'll probably do is uh you know i'll, I'll probably start taking some of the if i took profits out of that which i'm not going to at this time 
but if I yeah. did, I would probably sell the the fox uh, for a little bit of profit, not the snow. Uh, no, yeah, I'm taking the the fox snow so that prints out the fox share, and then I'm in the snow Joe, which prints out the snow share, yeah. and I'm just putting those two into the fox share snow share. Yep, that's all I'm doing and, right now. And really, you, you out compound um, small losses. Now, if you take a big loss and then the project you know, were to cease, a lot of people say, oh, you'll, I see a lot of moon boys in the chat saying, oh man, you know, if you, if you just, if you just compound at these levels, then doesn't matter what the loss is. Well, it does uh, to some mm -hmm. extent, but you know, in the majority, if you have a sustainable project that's mature, such as snowy, and you can find sustainable levels to dollar cost into, then you're going to mm -hmm. make money. And, uh, mm -hmm. and hopefully you're doing that. So, uh, and I hope yeah. you make lots of money and you never have to go to no. your day job again. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Yeah, That's man. all I had. Awesome. Thanks for coming up. Yeah. Yeah, bye. All right. Let's see what else. Uh, let's see. Uh, I think I'd spoken in my last Ask Me Anything while I was on vacation about the Pulse Dow thing, uh, and that was what pushed uh, Dow King into wanting to do something different uh, for the space, especially for Tomb Forks. Uh, so I'm very happy to see him being able to pivot and do something good with his with his influence. Uh, you know, I've always spoke highly of him, and I had people reaching out to me independently saying, "Do you think anything that's going on with Dow King is uh, is is legit?" And I you know, I said the same thing. No, <clears throat> why would a project listen? Why would a project uh, do malicious actions like that and then um, delete their their Discord and stuff like that? Uh, it makes no sense. That's a premeditated rug that had someone to blame it on. Uh, and everybody bit right into it and started blaming him, which was wild to me. Uh, clearly, those people rugged. Uh, I have, you know, no doubt uh, that Dow King had nothing to do with that. Uh, I know personally he's held snow for long periods of time, and uh, he never dumped on anybody. Um, so, you know, you, you take what you, you see and, and you discern it for yourself, uh, but that's my thoughts on that situation, uh, in case anybody was wondering. Uh, let me bring up Luca. A common face hey. in all the Ask Me Anythings. What's going on, man? Hey, just having some dinner, chilling here, listening to the AMA. Uh, how about you? Doing the work. Yes, sir. It was a it was a little stressful, no doubt, but but we're back and and now I'm ready to get back to work. Yeah, well, I saw you said you're going on vacation. I'm like, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it didn't go as well as I had thought, but it's okay. You know, the weather was bad in, in where I went anyway, so uh, you know, I wish for more time, but it is what it is. Yes, sir. Um, so, what exactly is the date on the? I know you guys expanded the print cycle for the share token do you have an approximate date of when they're going to stop minting no but i'm writing that down because i do get it asked a lot uh it's something i just need to calculate uh you know we had five percent emissions for two days and then we went down to four percent after a community vote uh, so i have to see uh based on where we're at now if i go to snowy owl i can see how many we've actually minted as far as uh our snow shares uh we've minted 39 thousand seven hundred forty so almost forty thousand out of the sixty thousand um so we're about uh sixty percent emitted um so if you take that four percent a day uh so about ten more days maybe yeah so, so about take maybe two weeks yep yep that sounds about right which puts us right where we had thought right at the beginning of april um right right so so we're not far off everybody that was assuming that i guess it's good to get an official date there uh, so about 10 days from today, this time, uh, snowshares will be fully emitted. Cool. Yeah, I think that uh, right now, the biggest experiment, because, I mean, we, we've we seen the same thing happen with every other uh, Tomb Fork, but I think, I think what's exciting with this community is that we, we will all get to experience what it's like to see a Tomb Fork stop minting, and that's something that I'm curious to see what happens. I mean, it could yeah. go either way. So. Yeah, um, dude, I'm, I'm nervous as shit. Uh, yeah. because, because I have to, you know, manage community emotions on it and I just don't want to do it disjustice. Injustice? Yeah, injustice. Uh, I don't, I don't want to do that. Uh, cause you know, I, I want to assume positive, uh, and, and I think it will be mainly positive as long as we have everything in place. Uh, and you know, that's something that me and the devil have to work on. 
uh, making sure we have something in place for that layer one. Uh, and I think we will. Um, you know, our dev's smart. He knows exactly. He seems to know exactly what things will do as far as affect price action. Um, and, you know, I, I have high hopes. Um, <clears throat> I hope everyone else does too. Uh, but it is nerve-wracking. You know, we're, we're moving fully into another layer, uh, and we need to make sure that it's implemented correctly. Um, so it's definitely an experiment, and it's uh, definitely the first of its kind uh, because our emission rate was so high. So hopefully we can garner enough, uh, you know, <clears throat> interest in our pro uh, project to move over uh, and also gain traction with TVL. Uh, so that's that's what I'm hoping for, and, and we're going to see what happens. Uh, but at least we know that we'll have a burning mechanism soon to get some of that snowshare off the market. And like the yeah. dev had said, uh, there will be some kind of, um, hopefully soon, some kind of small conversion uh, for your fox uh, or from your snow to your fox. And maybe that's something that we'll do long term to be able to move over into the new layer uh, as long as it's you know we find it to be sustainable. So <clears throat> no promises on that, just something that I had seen in the chat. Is the uh, fox layer uh, also a one-month emission or is it longer? No, it's, it's 60 days. And that was something I spoke okay. on that I actually liked is that having a fast emission brings out high PRs and tons of investors, uh, which is why we grew to 2,300. Uh, of course, obviously, we've dropped off a little bit now. But, um, you know, going into that uh, with a strong base and then going into a layer two and then fully committing to that layer two, um, it'll be cool because now we're going to be able to coast a little bit longer uh, without having to stress what's going on at the end of these emissions, you know. Because uh, two months in crypto is like 10 years. Uh, so yeah, so like <laughs> we'll have plenty of plans by then. And I don't know what, you know, what the future holds with the dev, uh, what his future plans are. Uh, but, you know, hopefully he, he works in the best interest of everybody that's involved right now. And I think he will. So, you know, I've still got a heavy investment and it won't change. Yep. Just uh, price cost in and out and find your entries and feel it out as we go. So And take profits. Uh, yeah, take uh, take some profits. That's for sure. Yeah, I hope uh, I hope Fox uh, stays floating. We'll we'll see how that rolls. I mean, with uh, the layer two, it's going to be supporting its second layer. Because I mean, mathematically, you would think maybe if you were to make the second layer emission shorter, then you could support your first layer. But then by doing it this way, then you have a transition for your community to go into a second project even stronger. It could go both ways. And it's a little more sustainable with less people because we don't have to constantly chug new people in to keep the layer sustainable. I know it's 60 days, yeah. but it's technically double. Um, so in that regard, you know, we won't have as much pressure needing to build uh, to be able to sustain the high PRs and stuff like that. So that that's kind of uh, what makes me feel more comfortable with the layer two, having longer emissions, uh, in my opinion. It's nice. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, nothing on my mind right now. I'll, uh, I'll pop, pop back in later if I, uh, sure. If I have anything. Well, thanks for coming up, man. Yeah. Have a good night. You as well. All right. Um, so that is, uh, that, that's all I got. Unless someone else has a question in chat, uh, you know, I'm going to leave it for just a second because sometimes people come in last second and want to ask a question. Um, you know. Uh, oh, I did want to speak about market conditions. Let me see where everything's at. We did have a little bit of a pump today, and I see people get excited. Um, Bitcoin's at 41000 uh, If people don't know, I think Bitcoin's doing a pretty good job fooling people. Uh, it's ranging really hard right now and has been uh, since it looks like January, uh, where it originally crashed down to about $36,000, uh, and it started at about forty three. And we've just been ranging there drastically for some time. Now, obviously, regular market conditions in the U.S. as far as stock markets, uh, you know, interest rates hiked and stuff like that will affect the prices. Uh, now, we're pretty insulated from those prices, but eventually, if the market conditions are bad, and I think they were bad enough, people are going to want to secure profits, and they're going to want to take them to more stable, uh, and this is high risk. Uh, as, as stable as we want to claim it, uh, this is more of a high-risk play. I think that more people are likely to take into account uh, those existential markets um, and, and react appropriately. And that means that they'll take it into more stable stuff, like you know maybe they put their stables in Platypus, 
uh, or wherever they see fit, um, or wait for you know markets to to fully uh, tank out, bottom out, and then start buying back in, uh, which you're going to see people do. Um, so I think we're seeing some of that, and that's why you're not seeing as much uh, TVL come back into snow, is because people are waiting to see what the interest rates did, um, and also you know rugs in the space, people not wanting to be as high risk. Um, whatever the case may be, you're going to see that fluctuate a lot. Uh, and most of the time we'll be mainly insulated from it, uh, but not every time. And I think this time we did get hit harder for it. Uh, of course, we got destabilized from, from layer two even launching. Uh, it hits communities pretty hard uh, with people trying to play it, spread out TVL, uh, and people playing for their self. Uh, it's difficult to manage. So I think we saw a lot of that and, and that you know, with uh, the market conditions caused uh, extra panic uh, and more people moving over to stables. Um, and then I think I saw a lot of people, you know, flip over to what I would call um, less popular projects. Uh, but, you know, that's part of the space and you can either complain about it or find ways to attract more people. And I choose to find ways to attract more people um, because that's what we that's what I think is going to positively impact you all the best. Uh, not me sitting around and complaining that the market conditions suck and that's why we're going down. Uh, but it is true, but it doesn't help to use that angle every single time. Um, so my opinion on that. Uh, all right, Case, come on up. What's up, man? Uh-oh. Might have your mic muted. Or your settings off. We get both here. Mm -hmm. You're doing something. There he is. You got me. I can you hear got you. Me? Yep, I got you. What's going on, man? All right. Well, first of all, I just want to say thanks so much, dude. You're here all the time helping all these people out and kind of giving some balance to. Uh, to the community that's huge well i appreciate that man i, I really do um, try real quick just wondering about uh polar bear where i i might have missed kind of actually where I you were with that i hadn't uh, i spoke on it a little bit um now i'm forgetting even what I, I had spoken about um where i think that their price action is uh and why it's there is because again on our fifth day we had garnered about 1500 members uh, where they only are at 500. Um, you know, there are partners, and if they succeed, uh, we succeed. So, I, you know, I recommend anybody that wants to go check them out, go ahead. Uh, now, I won't tell anybody to start selling snow for that, but I know that we had a large amount of the community doing that. Uh, so I'm not entirely uh, extremely excited about that move, um, but I didn't have any idea about it. Otherwise, I would have geared the community for it and find ways to move TVL safely over. Uh, and also potentially wait until there was a new farm that you could use it with. Um, so, you know, I, I, I had spoken to the dev. Uh, he's very cordial, very nice. Um, you know, I don't know what their future plans are. If you look in their documentations, they're saying they're not just a fork of us. They are going to innovate something new. Don't know what it is. Uh, they seem like a decent project, and you know I want them to succeed just as well as we do. And in the future, I think that our main goal for partnering is to be able to use all three uh, as like a as a partnership in marketing, saying, "Hey, look, you have you have three pools, and look at all the utilities of these tokens." Um, so in that regard, I think it's very uh, it's a very good thing for us because anything we can partner with, um, you know, depending on uh, can can be good for us and our price action. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm hopeful, uh, with the, with the, uh, with the partnership right now I am, uh, but I haven't spoken to many of their mods. I invited some of them to come to the ask me anything, uh, but none took me up on it. Uh, and I hadn't seen anybody around, so I couldn't directly ask anybody. Um, but you know, if any of their mods want to come up and speak with me, that'd be great. You know, I run these solo right now. Uh, but you know, I'll take if, if their team wants to come up and speak about their project anytime, now that we have a bigger audience, uh, you know, they're more than welcome to. Um, and, and again, I, you know, I hope for the success of their project. For sure. Yeah. I was just kind of wondering more, uh, wondering some of that and kind of why, uh, there was the idea of the partnership and what, 
you know, we were hoping to benefit from it because it, ideally, you know, any any type of partnership you want to. Sure, and I think I think the the main majority was the eyes on. They were a new project and they're growing rapidly, so it benefits them because we had a big following already that was into a similar tomb fork, and it benefits us because they were new, offered high APRs, higher than we could because they were brand new. Uh, so it offered, you know, some some traction back our way. Uh, so it was more symbiotic. Um, but uh, again, uh, I think that in the short term, it ended up hurting snow because we were already under peg and some people were cutting losses to try and gain them back there, um, which is, you know, that's going to happen. But uh, I think the main, the, the main thing is that we're going to have that bare snow uh, LP um, that's going to drive to both peg tokens. We're going to be able to use that on, I don't know which website it'll be usable on, uh, hopefully both, but I think the dev had spoken about getting both bear share and snow share in that pool, uh, and you get that distributed back to you. So that's what I know about it. Cool. Yeah, I was just kind of wondering because I think it is just a difficult thing to what kind of help make snowy owl uh, give that more of a future is by having you know that layer two coming in because at a certain point you're just printing so much without the demand there just kind of falls into its own hole in a way exactly and that's and that's something that that i want to speak with the the dev about is is more deflationary mechanisms for snow specifically now snow never stops emitting uh there's a hard cap on snow share uh but snow can keep emitting forever um and so you know i had spoken with i think dow king had spoken with me about it uh some potential opportunities that that i'll be looking into and if the dev uh has the time uh, you know, we'll try and implement new things. You know, I'm not, I'm not knocking, uh, you know, new opportunities. Now, I always that, you know, anything with GameFi uh, worries me a little bit naturally because I think that it's slightly a gimmick, uh, depending on how it's implemented, um, and it obviously, you know, puts new eyes on us. But at the end of the day, uh, you're back in the same position once you get all the eyes on you that you can possibly get then most of those eyes eventually start leaving uh, so you know it's a it's a tight rope that we walk in, and hopefully we can start retaining more people awesome man well thanks again for all your help yeah no and, problem uh, man. this is great all right man all right anybody else with a question let's see Most people talking about uh, Bitcoin in the chat. Uh, if you have any other questions, oh, Luca, come on up. Hey. Hey, what's um, going on? I feel like this has probably been mentioned before, but have you ever thought about creating a locking mechanism for the peg token? Because I feel like it's funny. The boardroom's like the least like easy to maneuver part of the... Uh, of the whole system but it seems like everyone is so obsessed with it and i mean it does help that people leave it so the apr goes up so then people look at it and then they're you know their little their brains are like well it's so high i want to be in it so then yeah. they go and buy all the tokens so i mean it creates that weird thing what if there is like you know just an, a direct incentive like just 10 percent higher apr and then i mean like that's just a number on a screen but like you lock your tokens for like I don't know, five days or whatnot, or you make it so that if you, uh, man, there has to be something. So if you, because I know like with Titano and all that jazz, like other kind of DeFi projects, they make it so that if you do want to be an investor, then you have to be invested for some time if you actually want to see your returns. It's not just a swing trading problem. Yeah. Which I find like that that is pretty much our biggest enemy at this point. And I know I brought it up like three weeks ago when this project initially started is this like you know when we were approaching peg it's like well what are we going to do to combat that and even though you know we don't have huge whales it is a smaller community we're still going to find that problem because the reality is the tvl to the total ratio of how much money is in it is still going to be the same so yeah i mean yeah. you know i I'd, I'd originally spoken negatively about lockup periods um and and i still feel mainly that way is is that i don't like locking people's liquidity up um, but and I also feel like the main majority of people uh, swing trading won't implement. They won't use that anyway because they're going to swing trade regardless. Um, so the main majority of people locking up were already holding. Does that make sense? 
Like the people yeah. that's attracting are already holding the coin and weren't looking to exit anyway. But to, I mean, to some regard, it would probably lock up like, you know, 10, 15 percent of some people that may panic sell uh, that's now locked in and they're unable to. So, it, I mean, it could be beneficial. Uh, you know, I can say that for sure. But I, to, to what extent would it outweigh and how many people would actually utilize it? I, I don't know. Um, but, you know, it could be something that we look into uh, if, if, you know, the dev feels like it's an appropriate response to, to combating the inflation that we, we are taking in uh, and locking in more TVL. So, you know, I, I won't disband it completely at this point. Uh, my eyes are opening up to, you know, all opportunities to try and fight back for PEG. So uh, I would say that's not a bad idea. I mean, you could also flip it to, like, for the PEG token, you could have it so that it's... Well, then it might disincentivize the peg token, but for like the share token, you could have it. So if you want to buy it, it's kind of like that double-edged sword. You always end up with it. It's like, well, if you buy it, that's free. But if you want to sell it, then that's a 10%, you know, loss. But I mean, you could flip it on the, on the flip side. It's like, well, if you want to take 5% hit, then you can buy the token, but then you get the best APRs in the boardroom. The thing is with an open market, there is nothing you can do that is beneficial that locks people in permanently that would make them yeah. feel comfortably because there's always yeah. a back end or some way to take advantage of it or uh, a negative connotation of it uh, that will, you know, that it just ends up being like some type of small gimmick that people might get hype about, buy into the token right. for swing trading. Uh, but at the end of the day, it doesn't stick. Uh, so, I no. mean, if, if you make it convoluted and add a bunch of shit, doesn't mean that people will actually stick to it. And that's the sad part. No. Yeah, it's either you either see it in the short term or the long term at the end of the day. Yep. So it is kind of a tough battle. It is. It is very tough. It is a very, uh, very tough battle. But I think that we're doing really well just on the base fundamentals of where we're at. Uh, you know, the auto compounder is working because there's less liquidity uh, and we're on an uptrend, you know, uh, and that's good to see. Uh, it may not be as fast as everybody wanted, it, but we are on an uptrend. Uh, we're at you know 39 cents uh the when i left vacation we were at 30 cents um so you know it's nine cents sure but it's up you know we were up 30 percent in the day uh so that's great uh and hopefully it continues to work yeah another thing i was thinking about too i think that the um i think that activity in the community is going to drive investment and also people to stick around because if you look at any small tomb fork nobody wants to stick around because it's like the discord's boring everything's boring why would i want to be here i'm already talking in the two ohm discord you know if you look at the two ohm community i feel like that was like such a driving factor like when you get that like family mentality that is so important yeah i think that if we can drive that home here like you're doing a good job but i feel like that we can definitely if, if we were fine if we were able to find like just some like the other guy was talking about more mods or even just i mean then again I, i'm talking about it why don't i just step up you know <laughs> a little more effort into it right it's just it's that kind of thing it's just yeah more the more it, things that we do the less it becomes like all right i'm losing 10 percent today and gaining 10 percent tomorrow i'm more like what's everyone doing hell yeah peg is like 30 percent down but i'm thirty uh, percent better mood today, you know, just dumb shit that you know, I, I, yeah, I truly believe that stuff. is that you know i I don't I was never in the the two ohm space uh, and I and there's team members that that I speak with, uh, but everybody says that we feel like early you know two ohm and stuff like that, uh, which is great. Mm -hmm. I love hearing that. Um, but you know that's what I want anyway. That's what I had originally yeah. wanted when I came into communities. And that's what I drive for is that like, uh, you know, being able to have just open, genuine conversations with people um, and those same investors are the same people that are holding through the shit storms. Uh, and it doesn't matter how much FUD comes in uh, that that we're just like, you know, you look stupid coming in here and you're going to waste your breath. Uh, and that's the that's what I try and and do. And I think we're getting there. Um, you know, I think we have a great community here, uh, but obviously more work needs to be done. Uh, you know, there needs to be more things to engage the community rather than. Um, just being a hub to talk, you know, I want to do events uh, and, and things like that that can force people to be engaged, uh, which I'm, mm -hmm. you know, I, I really yeah. want to do. I liked uh, in two um, just an idea. They had a uh, trivia thing that they did like every six hours or whatever. And yep. They gave away like a small little thing like at the end of the week. 
that's a decent that's a decent thought it doesn't even have to be like anything crazy it could just be basic stuff like that uh phil i just wanted to address you in the chat family mentality leads to entitledness i feel like that entitledness is more comes from just not knowing how these things work and if you trust the people that you're already spending time with on a daily basis then when like you work together towards a common goal instead of taking your money out and leaving, right? Because if you if you actually want to be a part of something, then you'll work towards the better, you know, the, the better good. And um, I think that's uh, and also that whole family mentality leading into like uh, people shaming sellers and, and uh, moon boy mentality can get very dangerous and cult like. Uh, and that's why you'll see yeah. me sometimes. And that's my job as as you know what I do here is that I address those things. Hey, it's okay if you sell. Hey, it's okay if you want to buy back in, uh, and represent myself that way so that everybody's welcome and everybody's welcome to leave as well. Uh, but hopefully, you'd be more willing to stay by the end of it. And that's how I see it. Yeah. You can't force people here, and you're in an echo chamber if all you talk about is the coin will moon. Uh, and yeah, yeah. And having those engaging conversations where you can say, "Hey, this is what I feel negative about snow today," and someone says, "Well, this is why you should feel positive," and having that debate is much more essential uh, for not only new investors um, to understand uh, the different pros and cons, but also older investors that have spoken to me in private uh, feel uh, better about is that they're not seeing a bunch of crazy shit in the chat, uh, and it seems like somewhere that is comfortable to invest in um, and stay at is because, you know, we don't have a bunch of people screaming, snow's going to $40. Uh, you know, yeah. that's that's not, so, I don't like to make promises and I don't like to say that we're only going up. Uh, you know, it's a tough battle regardless. So, yeah, I think that's my job mainly um, here is that, I, you know, we I want to put some type of family value uh, in our community and make sure everybody feels comfortable chatting. Um, but to combat the, the cult-like mentality is difficult, uh, but hopefully I'm navigating it well enough. Let's see. Yeah, uh, 2 ohm definitely, it, it brought that out with their share tokens, how everyone was talking, it's going to hit like 30, 40, 50K, and I mean, it definitely brought the, uh, it definitely brought the investors, but at the end of the day, it didn't bring any support once it actually fell. Yeah, and, so. and that's and it's a difficult battle to make sure that, uh, you know, I could be speaking to people that are looking to, you know, swing trade or, or anybody, um, you know, that doesn't, just because we feel it is a community-driven thing doesn't mean that everybody in this community feels a part of it or that they want to stay invested through the tough times. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a difficult battle, but, you know, uh, it's one that I am facing and will continue to face. Uh, no doubt. So uh, Phil had said, do you get annoyed at people asking base questions like when do Genesis pulls end and start? Uh, nah, man, I, I don't really get annoyed by that. Uh, I think everybody uh, has the option to ask me anything they want, uh, and it's my job to be able to answer it uh, genuinely and like I never answer. I always go into any question I answer uh, like I had never answered it before. Uh, sure, part of me is like, man, I wish you would have just read, but whatever you know it takes me like i always say it only takes me 15 seconds to type it out um so i know some people get annoyed by that but not me personally but yeah uh, good points man i appreciate you coming up i'll leave you to it all right man come on up sorry i don't know how to say your discord name so maybe you can help me out Are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? I can. Hey, how's it going? Oh, I, uh, you can call me Abdel. That's the easiest way to say it. All right, Abdel. How you doing? Yes. Good, good. Thank you for asking, bro. Um, a, a couple of few things. I just wanted to, to, to thank you first because you're always here uh, answering questions. I know that everybody's been thanking you, but uh, I really want to, uh, to emphasize on it. So um, th thank you for the job that you're doing. That and, means a lot. Uh, I'm staying, especially because I see that it's a it's a great community. Uh, community. So uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is, um, um, I think education and what you're doing is great. Uh, but when when we look a couple of days ago, um, I I don't want to to 
to go back to the to the bad bad uh, bad launch because it's not a bad launch. I think we had a great launch for L2. It's just we are we were missing education. I'm I'm always on the chat, always checking what people are saying. And a couple of days before the launch, everybody was saying, "You should wait. You should wait. Uh, snow is going to raise. Snow is going to give the moon. So don't sell your snow token now. Wait until the day of launch." So you just switch half of your snow and then you create the, the LP on Fox, blah, 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 blah. And if we would have done it slowly, all of us, even me, I waited. I'm not going to lie about that. I waited the last day to, to create my LP and, and, and to switch half of my snow to Joe to be able to to buy Fox or to, to, just, to just recreate the LP to be part of Genesis. So if we would have had like something like uh, just a, an, an, a, um, a picture or, or a, one slide of a PowerPoint saying that this is what you're supposed to do a couple of days before the launch yeah. to be able to be part of Genesis. So You're 100% right. And that was just, you know, my, my, uh, what would you, my inexperience in doing this. Uh, you know, I should have. I'm not saying I to blame you, okay? No, 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 no. I know you're not. Um, no, for sure. I know you're not. Um, but I'm saying like. In, in trading and everything in finance but i've done the mistake too so yeah exactly was, no to 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 raise and then we're gonna just gonna sell soon high price and then we create lps so it was a mistake so uh just talking about that just to to bring the point that uh if we reach back we're gonna have the same issue yeah and and i think that i'm gonna be better geared for it uh because i'm already thinking about it early I already have people reaching out, uh, and you know I'll get graphics made and stuff like that. Yeah, I heard you talking about like doing it slowly, like five to ten percent, and that would be great if if we can have like um, as I said, the pictures that you we can put again and again on the chat so people are aware that yeah. yes, you need to create LPs slowly because if we all do it at the same time, the same thing is going to happen. Again. Agreed. Yeah, yeah, I agreed. And uh, and and it sucked to see it happen. And I don't think all of that was, um, you know, I think a mass majority of it was mismanaged. Uh, people putting in LP, and then also while we were doing it, people got scared, so then they started selling off. Um, and that's that's part of it. And that's that's the inexperience I had and not making sure it was clear when to do what. Um, but I know now, and that's the important thing is it was a learning lesson uh, for me especially. Um, but I think again, like you said, that I can I can do better the next time whenever we reach peg, uh, and I will do better uh, this time. And I think everybody else will too because we saw what would happen, uh, and hopefully we've learned uh, from those mistakes. But but also uh, I do want to speak about the launch because yes, I do think it was a successful launch. Uh, but again, uh, I saw a lot of people upset that we put the USDC and the Joe in there. And I actually get that, um, you know, I I, uh, I feel like in hindsight, uh, it should not have been that highly weighted, uh, even after the reduction. Uh, if I could have gone back, I would have reduced those to almost just puny levels for people that just wanted to dip their feet in and almost not worth it. Um, you know, and, and that's one thing that I regret not pushing for because I don't think that I had taken into account, you know, I was even blinded because I felt like our community was so strong that we could tolerate it. Uh, but it was clear that, that obviously, um, you know, we, we took that fall. Um, and so I was taken back by, by it. And, you know, we fixed the, the APR on it about 12 hours in. Uh, but I think some of the damage was done. Now, obviously layer two is still running successfully. Uh, so there's nothing to fret there, but, uh, I, that's one thing that I wish I would have changed uh, in layer two. Okay. Uh, the, the last point I just wanted to raise is um, we still have three to four percent, and it is great. I mean, um, I prefer to have even I have another project on Harmony where I only have one percent day, and that's great because I know that the team is great. It's been running for three months. I don't even think about it, and it's only one percent. Yep. So I hear people saying oh can we add more apr here can we add that can we add that we don't need more apr we already have more than enough 
Yep, and that, that's the thing is that we're able to offer that because of our emission rate, but it comes with a cost, uh, and, and there is no permanent fix or some gimmick that we can slap on, like higher APRs. Um, and the reason that you're getting lower APR on these single side stakes is because you're giving out half the benefit to the project as an LP. Uh, so, of course, you're going to get less. Now, if, now could we raise it um, temporarily? Uh, you know, the, the dev's not willing to do it, and, and I think it's smart not to. Uh, it, should be, uh, it should be where it's at because uh, it, you're giving out half the benefit and you're getting out half the reward. Um, and that's just part of it. It's not full time. You're not going to be in that uh, forever. Uh, and I think it um, would be mismanaging it if we were to increase that APR at this point. But yes, I agree. 3% is a ton, especially when you're compounding. Uh, I think we get blinded because we see high APRs that are clearly unsustainable in other projects because they just launched. Uh, and, and that's just part of those things where like you get desensitized to it. And so 3% seems puny, but in reality, 3% is a, a, a ton. Yeah. But yes, thank you. Fair points. And I appreciate you coming up. Anytime. See you guys. See you, man. Yeah. All right. See Marie. Come on up. New to Discord. Well, I'm glad you're here. Come on up, see Murray. You should have gotten an invite to be able to come up on stage. Or you didn't know you did it. Either way. Let's see if I've got any general chat questions. See Murray, you have you have asked to come up and I have accepted it. I think you I don't know if you see it. Um but um, really fair points for everybody that came up today. Um, really appreciate it. Hopefully I can answer a couple more questions before I have to get off. I know it's been an hour and a half, um, but uh, uh, good to ask me anything again. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to stop uh, believing in the project, and I'm just as bullish as I was. Uh, you know, the things that we need best are more TVL, um, and, and we're working towards it. The Dow King video uh, should bring more investors in. Once they see that I am multi-sigged, once they see that I am, uh, you know, I'm serious about the project, and so is our dev, uh, that should bring in uh, more investors uh, to come back into the project uh, and stop this, you know, this APR chasing uh, and, and to come back into good projects uh, that just work. Uh, and I think Snowy Owl does just work. You know, we came with a minimalist approach with fast emissions, and I think it was really well done. Uh, I think the stealth launch is really nice. And I think that we have a lot left to offer. Uh, and, and if you're still invested here, if you're looking to invest here, um, you know, thank you. Uh, and I appreciate you, um, as always I do. You know, uh, you know, anybody that's given their time in a red day uh, to come listen to me or be invested or be positive in chat, um, awesome. Thank you all so much. Uh, you do as much uh, for me as I do for you, I promise. Um, I think you shield to the house of obsidian. Their community is full of people looking for opportunities. Uh, no, I don't condone shilling. Um, chain link and beefy win. Uh, listen, you know, I, I've reached out to the dev about the chain, the chain link thing. Uh, you know, I, it's still signed off for and ready to go. Uh, I don't know when we'll be marketing it. Uh, hopefully it's soon. Uh, I understand that, that it's, it's been advertised and I think we spoke about it too early. Uh, but needless to say, it's out there now, and we are doing our best with the situation. Uh, Beefy, I've reached out to them every day since. Uh, they did say they were interested. Um, so I've already spoken about that. They said they were interested. Uh, they were supposed to get some propositions to me about the potential, uh, and I've reached out to them two days in a row with nothing back. I don't know why people don't just reach back in this space. Discord is very easy to navigate. Just say no or say yes. Uh, but either way, you know, I, I present myself always available, uh, and I always – you know, answer opportunity uh, for this project specifically. Uh, you know, I, I would love for the same respect back, but that's not always going to happen. And other people, you know, from a higher place may not feel as inclined. Uh, and that's okay. But eventually I'll wear them down. They'll answer me. Uh, and we're going to get listed uh, on Beefy. So uh, now I, I will say that they may, you know, try and do something different. Uh, once they offer us something, they could try and gouge us with, with high prices. I'm not sure. Uh, but I'm letting you know, as of right now, um, the dev reached out and said they were interested. Um, you know, I, I was hoping it would be sooner um, and it would give us a lot more TVL. Uh, 
uh, but this is the position I'm in. Uh, and, you know, in the future, I think that I've learned that just because I get a hint of it or just because I get something confirmed, uh, maybe not speak on it uh, so vaguely to everybody because uh, not not even the questions in the chat, uh, but I don't want anybody to feel disappointed because uh, but I, but the reason I do is because I want you guys to know that I'm working so hard in the back end uh, to make sure that I bring value to holders. Um, so you know it's a it's it's weird for me because I like being transparent uh, and speaking about the things that I'm doing, but I also don't like uh, being the point of disappointment. Like I'm not doing anything either. Uh, trust that I am trying. Uh, it's just that not everybody uh, feels like they need to have Discord conversations. I guess uh, with Snowy Owl right now, so. No matter, uh, you know, I'll get it worked out one way or another. Um, so you can trust that. Now